Professor Van Holbe is the president of the European Kidney Health Alliance and chairman of the European Chronic Disease Alliance. And he is the former president of the European Renal Association, European Dialysis and Transplant Association, ERA EDTA. Professor Van Holde has conducted the majority of his research at the University Hospital Ghent in Belgium. He's a medical scientist with areas of investigation and in clinical nephrology, adequacy of dialysis and uremic toxins. And with over 900 peer-reviewed articles, his activities don't stop there. Beyond his research interests, Professor Van Holder has a strong involvement in health policy and raising awareness for kidney diseases amongst all stakeholders, including those not directly involved, such as non-nephrologists, medical professionals, regulators, policymakers, and the general public. Ray, together with other co-authors and colleagues, you recently published a paper with a strong statement fighting the unbearable likeness of neglecting kidney health, the decade of the kidney. What made you choose such a provocative title? Yes, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity for this uh, interview. Um, I wrote this article essentially because uh, there is a lot of unawareness, especially in the outside world, in people who are not confronted with kidney disease. And as a consequence, also policymakers uh, do not follow and do not undertake action as it should be done. And one of the other problems is also that uh, people just simply do not understand kidney disease and that people with kidney disease quite often do not know it uh, until it is too late. So the action must be done much earlier and much more intensively than currently. The paper represents a call for action, which was prepared by the European Kidney Health Alliance, EKHA for short. What is the mission of the EKHA? Um, EKHA is uh, a Brussels-based uh, NGO um, that is uh, doing advocacy for the community of kidney patients and for the entire nephrological community at the level of the European Union, but from there also uh, top to bottom uh, to the national level. Although it is for sure that not all this can be done um, on this uh, one single platform. So uh, there must be parallel initiatives uh, nationally. And that is still an issue that needs some continued working on it. One of the great successes of the European Kidney Health Alliance is the fact that there has been running a MEP group for kidney health since 2008. This MEP group is the informal group of members of the European Parliament committed to improve the policy response to the growing burden of kidney disease in Europe. Could you tell us more about it and the people involved? Yes, um, we have uh, for the time being 23 uh, European parliamentarians from 11 countries or 12 countries that are supporting our actions. Um, and uh, they do this in several different ways. Uh, first of all, by drawing the attention of the European Commission, which is some sort of ministry uh, system, um, to uh, the kidney problem by asking parliamentary questions and also by taking part in our initiatives uh, supporting us by social media, etc. Um, and we are quite happy that uh, current uh, uh, chair of this uh, group is Hilde Voutmans, that's a Belgian politician who is very much involved because her sister-in-law is a kidney patient and together with her we undertake a lot of actions. Uh, the other point is that uh, with the help of the parliamentarians we got um, a one million project from the European Commission to study the differences in uh, kidney treatment and the reasons for that throughout Europe. Um, and finally, we are also very happy um, during the first part of this year to be in the possibility to speak to Ms. Stella Kiriakidas, which is the European Commissioner for Health. 
and who fully supported our actions, understood very much about kidney disease and was very helpful for our initiative. So she, she was also the person who was introducing a kidney forum that we held um, during spring this year. The European Kidney Health Alliance not only promotes communication and networking amongst policymakers, as its president, you also encourage countries to support patient health literacy with regard to kidney disease. Could you share some of the hurdles and the next steps on dealing with this? Um, health literacy is a, a problem, not only for kidney disease, I think for all chronic diseases, but it may be more pronounced in kidney disease and especially in uh, the populations uh, uh, who are not transplanted. The issue is a little bit better for transplant patients, but in general, uh, kidney patients before kidney replacement therapy and dialysis patients have an illiteracy around 30 to 40 percent. Uh, so that makes them uh, quite difficult uh, to, uh, makes it quite difficult to them to um, understand uh, every issue that is presented to them and to make a clear decision and also to take uh, uh, preventive measures and to take part actively in their treatment, for instance, by performing home dialysis. So that's one side of the problem. Um, the other side is the lack of information that is given to patients by uh, kidney professionals. Um, and um, on, we uh, undertook an inquiry among kidney patients throughout Europe where there were huge differences among countries and countries. Uh, certain countries really were uh, acknowledged for being insufficient in uh, giving information about treatment options, sufficient information and all information about uh, treatment options. And uh, there is a, a specific problem about minorities, um, refugees, uh, and uh, people who are not using the usual channels, a little bit the same problem as we have currently with vaccination for COVID-19. And uh, we must, uh, with the help of experts that are not necessarily nephrologists, uh, develop uh, specific methods to reach those people better. Ray, I would like uh, to quote your son, Peter Van Holder, who said that patient education is essential because it allows the patient to represent their interests in their different disease areas and to influence how treatment is developed. Patient support and engagement runs on the family. Peter has been working for the European AIDS Treatment Group. He is an advocate for their cooperation with the European Patients Academy on Therapeutic Innovation and he has supported many African projects in the past. What can we learn for chronic kidney disease from the more professional and prominent organizations' voices of AIDS activists? Yes, um, my son has been working uh, um, for, I think, about 10 years uh, in Africa. Um, in this way, got interested in the AIDS problem. Um, uh, but uh, then later on, when he returned to Europe, um, became involved uh, as um, a um, uh, manager of the European uh, AIDS Treatment Group, uh, EATG, uh, which is uh, another Brussels-based NGO, um, where he um, since then um, is uh, uh, running this uh, NGO. Uh, now, the uh, interesting thing about EATG, which is a well-acknowledged uh, Brussels uh, uh, group uh, on the European scene, is that it is a pure patient organization. And also that the AIDS group is a very resilient group, um, a group that is very active to improve um, the fate of their fellow patients. And uh, interestingly, uh, they managed to do this uh, very well. Um, actually, um, it is clear that AIDS uh, gets uh, really the attention it deserves but uh, gets more attention proportionally than, for instance, kidney disease. 
Um, so the, resili the resilience of their patients is a very interesting issue. And uh, through him, I learned also about this uh, EU PATI uh, initiative. That's a kind of course that makes patients uh, more uh, aware of their situation and also uh, teaches them how to um, create more awareness and to perform advocacy. So when I heard from this, um, I contacted immediately our patient groups. Uh, we have, first of all, the European Kidney Patient Federation as one of the, the five major members um, of uh, EKHA, but we have also the Dutch Kidney Patient Federation. Um, and I made them aware of the initiative. And as far as I know, several of them followed this. So I hope that this uh, makes us uh, more uh, strong to convince the European Union and uh, Europe at large about the importance of kidney disease, but because I'm convinced that all this uh, needs to go uh, through the patients, that the patients have to play a central role because policymakers uh, are much more, uh, and rightly, I think, listening to the patients than to us. There are also more patients than uh, there are professionals. So we obviously have to do this together with them. Um, and this will also help to solve another problem that is the so-called patient-related outcomes, um, the quite uh, trivial things that, uh, not, not trivial, but things that do not kill them, but that are bothering them, itching, uh, to name one, uh, fatigue, uh, pain, etc. Uh, things we, we have paying not enough attention to, and I think this needs to be solved. And it is really reconforting that many industries now also start listening and talking with patients. And that, for instance, also the, the European Medicine Agency, the EMA, is now uh, taking patients into its uh, consultancy. I think that's a very important point. Thank you for your and your family's engagement and for the inspiration in shaping a better future for kidney disease patients, Ray. It was a pleasure to have you join us in this interview. So thank you very much and I wish you all the best with the meeting um, and I hope that uh, people will have a lot of help from all information that comes from it.